when you're visiting a website like Facebook or Google or any website that has a HTTPS before the URL, you see a green padlock icon on your browser. When you click on it, it shows you that the connection to this site is secure. Your browser shows you this padlock icon because the website you're visiting uses HTTPS, which stands for HTTP Secure. And this HTTPS protocol is meant to be more secure than the ordinary HTTP. In this video, I'm going to show you why HTTPS is more secure than HTTP and why you should always prefer websites that have HTTPS before their URL. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is basically a website where you can learn various things online through video lessons. If you are someone who has got a passion to learn something but you can't seem to find a source to learn from, then Skillshare is probably the way to go. It has got thousands of video lessons about technology, art, business and much more. For example, it has got lots of video lessons about ethical hacking which are taught by experts and you can also learn computer programming from here. And not only technology, you've also got many videos about, let's say, music, painting, and so on. The best thing about Skillshare is that it costs as less as $10 per month. Now, $10 is literally very cheap and very affordable when you compare with other platforms that provide the same service as Skillshare. And also, by paying this $10, you can watch any number of video courses as you wish, unlike other learning platforms. So, go ahead, start your free trial on Skillshare by clicking on the link in the description and give it a try. I bet you will not regret it. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is a protocol followed by all the servers and browsers on the web to exchange messages. For example, let's suppose Facebook.com is not using HTTPS but it's only working on the ordinary HTTP protocol. In that case, when you type in facebook.com in your browser's search bar and hit enter, your browser is going to send a HTTP request message to the server of Facebook, following all the rules and syntaxes of HTTP protocol. Once Facebook receives the request, it responds back with a HTTP response message, once again following all the rules and syntax of HTTP protocol. Once your browser receives the HTTP response message, which obviously contains the HTML data, it is going to convert this HTML data into a graphical format. And finally, you see the homepage of Facebook. So far, so good. Now it's time to log into your Facebook account from the Facebook's homepage. You enter your username and password and finally click login. When you click this login button, your credentials must be sent to the Facebook server so that they can be validated. Obviously, your credentials are sent to the server in the form of a HTTP message. Well, did you find anything risky here? Since HTTP messages are not encrypted, the credentials that you are sending to the Facebook server are in plain text. Anyone on your network can sniff the HTTP packets that you are sending to Facebook server and they can easily retrieve your username and password from the same HTTP message, since everything is in plain text. So, your Facebook account is compromised. In order to avoid this, we need to make sure that our username and password are encrypted so that even if someone is sniffing all our packets, they will still not be able to retrieve the username and password in plain text form and all they will have is encrypted data which can't be made any use of. So let's say that before we even send the HTTP message to Facebook server, we encrypt the whole message first so that we know no one can retrieve our credentials other than Facebook. Now. Is everything fixed and secure if we do this? You might say yes, but technically there is still a vulnerability even after we encrypt all the messages. What if a hacker is still acting as a man in the middle and sniffing all your packets? In this case, when you make a request to facebook.com, the hacker can simply send you a fake Facebook login page or a phishing page as a HTTP response message pretending to be Facebook. If you are not careful and log in with your Facebook credentials using that fake Facebook page that the hacker sent you, your account is again compromised. Since a hacker can easily record your username and password as you have logged in using the fake page that he created. So we need to actually fix two things here. One, encrypt all the messages. Two, make sure that we are communicating with the real web server and not with a hacker or a third party. 
HTTPS can solve these two things at the same time. So now, let's say Facebook is using HTTPS above HTTP. Before you understand the upcoming topic, here are some things you need to know. A public key is used to encrypt the data. A private key is used to decrypt the data which is encrypted with the corresponding public key. Facebook has a set of public key and private key. Not only Facebook, basically every website that uses HTTPS has a set of public and a private key. For this video, let's say Facebook's public key is represented as K+, and its private key is represented as K-. So, this is what happens when you type in facebook.com in your browser and hit enter, provided that Facebook is using HTTPS. Once Facebook receives the request from your browser, it sends back its digital certificate which contains various information about Facebook including its private key. Digital certificates are basically signed by trusted third-party organizations known as certificate authorities. All the certificates issued by the certificate authorities are digitally signed with the private key of the CA. Your browser by default has all the public keys of various trusted certificate authorities. As soon as a digital certificate is received from any website, in this case Facebook, your browser is going to fetch the public key of the CA which issued that particular digital certificate. It is then going to check the authenticity of the digital certificate using the public key of CA to make sure if the response is coming from a real Facebook server or from any third party. If the digital certificate is invalid, it means that the response you received is not from a real Facebook server and it is probably coming from some third party or a hacker. Your browser then blocks the connection and informs you about it immediately. If the certificate is valid, the process resumes. In this way, we have achieved authenticity, which means we can now make sure if we are talking to a real server or a hacker who is pretending to be Facebook. Now, once a digital certificate is validated, your browser generates a symmetric key which can be used to both encrypt and decrypt the data. It then encrypts this generated key with the public key of Facebook and sends this encrypted data to Facebook's server. Once the data is received at Facebook's end, it is then going to be decrypted with Facebook's private key. Now, Facebook has a symmetric key which is generated by our browser. By doing this, we make sure that the key generated by our browser will not be compromised to any hacker who might be acting as a man in the middle. From now on, all the data that is exchanged between Facebook and our browser is encrypted with this symmetric key that is generated by our browser. Since no one except Facebook and ourselves know this key, our data is completely safe. So when we type our username and password and click login, our credentials are going to be first encrypted using this key and only then they are sent to the Facebook server through the internet. So you have seen how HTTPS make things more secure. It is a fundamental thing on internet which protects the privacy of users. So, one thing to understand, while submitting some important information on the internet, make sure that you are using a website that uses HTTPS. Alright, thanks for watching this video, hope you learned something new from this video. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up below and if you don't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down below. And also comment down below what you think about the video. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more awesome videos and I'll meet you in the next one. Cheers!